Coming up next, we have a keynote and a really exciting announcement from Billy Talheimer, the CEO and co-founder of Regent, the startup that is going to facilitate transportation between coastal cities. Billy? Thank you. Miami to Key West in an hour for $50 and with zero emissions. That's the dream we're trying to make happen here. I'm Billy Talheimer, co-founder and CEO at Regent. At Regent, we build sea gliders, which are all-electric flying boats for regional transportation. We're focused on the maritime market, on coastal mobility, and, and that's important. 40% of the world's population lives in coastal communities. Can we roll the video? The biggest cities in America, Miami, Los Angeles, New York, Boston, all on the coast, all with tens of millions of people moving in coastal communities. We travel between these cities by airplanes today, but airplanes may be fast, but we're waiting in traffic at the airport. We're emitting tons of carbon fuels on these airplanes. There's other modes too. We can take boats between these cities, but boats are slow and have even worse emissions. We can take cars, but over hundreds of miles, we get stuck in traffic. We cause even more smog in cities. Overall, this is the kind of future that we don't want. This is the status quo today, and we're changing it. To change regional mobility, we need to go green, we need to go fast, and we need to innovate. And that's why Regent is here. Regent builds sea gliders, all electric flying boats that float, foil, and fly between coastal destinations. You board them like a ferry on their hull, they rise up on hydrofoils, underwater wings to give wave tolerance in harbors. And then we take off, retracting the hydrofoil, flying on a cushion of air as we go 180 miles at 180 miles an hour with existing battery technology between coastal cities. Now, why do these vehicles make sense, especially in the context of all the solutions we see for AAM? These ground effect vehicles, sea gliders, fly in an aerodynamic phenomenon called ground effect. Ground effect is what we see pelicans flying on. It's this cushion of air flying over the surface of the water. We get aerodynamic efficiencies, almost like a hovercraft, except instead of containing that pocket with a skirt, we get advantages also staying on our wings. Now, this isn't new. Actually, the, the Soviets pioneered this technology in the 1960s with their chronoplons, and then wing and ground vehicles, or WIGs, have iterated ever since. But no one's quite gotten it, because we're obviously not flying them today. So why not? Well, there's primarily three problems that have affected all past ground effect vehicles. The first is wave tolerance. You can imagine ground effect vehicles like seaplanes skipping off the waves as they take off. At best, it's uncomfortable. At worst, you can't fly at all. And now I'm commuting. I, I want to rely on this mode of transportation. I can't get to where I want to go on time because the waves are too bad. So the solution is hydrofoils. We take hydrofoils, which have been matured on hydrofoil ferries on America's Cup racing yachts, to lift sea gliders off the water in the harbor where we need wave tolerance. So our hulls are insulated by the discomfort of the waves. We get year-round operations, and we can maneuver through harbors and then retract these hydrofoil systems and land with still high wave tolerance. The second problem is that we really just can't operate Past ground effect vehicles cannot operate in these crowded harbors. We're taking off and landing like aircraft. We're going 100, 150 miles an hour in some of the busiest harbors in the world. That's clearly unviable, especially when you think about our markets, that the biggest cities and the most clientele have the most crowded harbors. Again, the way to solve this problem is with the hydrofoils on the sea glider. The hydrofoils, which are, again, adopted from America's Cup technology, actually have extremely high maneuverability in addition to their wave tolerance. This lets us maneuver around vessels in the crowded harbor. We get to be a boat where it makes sense to be a boat and give our customers a, a very pleasant uh, experience, totally wave tolerant ride. Now even the hydrofoils have problems themselves. The top speed of hydrofoils is limited by a phenomenon called cavitation. 
the faster you go and the more lift we generate with the hydrofoil, you actually end up boiling the water around the foil, and this has led to the demise of several America's Cup racing yachts. So we need to get around this problem, and the way we do that is with a distributed electric propulsion system known as a blown wing. We distribute propulsion over the leading edge of our wing. We blow our wing so that we have high speed air moving over the surface of the wing and we create high speed uh, air and therefore high lift even at low speeds. So now we slow down the takeoff speed onto the wing such that we can take off directly from the hydrofoil. Now even blown wing technology is not used, uh, is not new. Other, other people have tried this and distributed propulsion over wings but whenever they've done it, it's been very heavy and complicated and expensive because you're basically just distributing a bunch of engines. Now we have electric propulsion, and this is really the key unlock here. Now we can distribute our propulsion lightweight with low cost, few moving parts, and high redundancy just by sending multiple wires through the vehicles. The last problem of past wing and ground vehicles is their poor safety records, not only in operations in waves and in ground effect, but in the harbors with other maritime traffic. The solution here is that we're already testing advanced sensor systems, detect and avoid systems. We have our CTO here flying a helicopter at 50 feet off the water at 100, 200 miles an hour with existing radar systems and we're proving not only can we pick up the big boats which show up on systems like AIS that tell us where the big boats are, but additionally we can pick up the small boats, we can pick up the fishing boats and the sailboats in harbor and show that we have a safe system. And it's not just the sensors on the boat, there's also advances in composite technology that let us take emergency landings. Now we can land at high speed in waves and we can still protect all the passengers on board the vehicles. And all this technology exists today. And so we think about the viability of a sea glider and how is this crazy looking thing actually gonna come to market? It's actually the compilation of a bunch of technologies that exist today that we're familiar with. Hydrofoils from America's Cup and from hydrofoil ferries, electric propulsion from AAM, advanced sensor systems which are ubiquitous in maritime and advanced composite structures. All of these come together in the sea glider to provide this low cost, high speed, zero emission form of regional transportation. So this is really the future of, of what we're building at Regent. Sea gliders for 180 miles today up to 500 miles tomorrow of zero emission regional maritime mobility. Now, talk a bit about the sea glider and sort of why it makes sense and what it is, but, I, but it, I, I also want to talk about the how, not just the why, both how we got here and how we're going to bring this to market. That worked, awesome job. <laughs> so when we think about how we got here, it actually comes from my own and the founding team's background in AAM and electric aviation, really seeing two challenges with how we bring these vehicles to market. On one hand, it's the cost and duration of an FAA certification program. You look back in history, it takes a billion dollars and a decade to certify a new vehicle, and that's a vehicle that doesn't fly on batteries and doesn't fly itself, so that only gets worse. In addition, we look at the range of existing battery technology and aircraft, and when we enter in all these operational realities, like reserve fuel if your airport's occupied, or end-of-life batteries after 2,000 cycles, or even aircraft traffic patterns, or a headwind in one direction. All of a sudden, these rosy range predictions start looking a lot less rosy. Sea gliders solve both these problems. If I can, there we go. <laughs> so the first is that actually because we stay within a wingspan of the surface at all times, because we're following maritime navigational laws, we're under the jurisdiction of the Coast Guard and maritime authorities globally rather than the FAA, and we've confirmed this with both maritime aviation authorities worldwide. Now, this doesn't mean that the bar for safety is any lower. We actually have the same systems on board as a lot of AAM vehicles. We have the same safety requirements with respect to protecting the crew, but it does mean that the maritime certification authority has more bandwidth, and we can move through that process more quickly with fewer resources. Additionally, when we look at that range problem, we see how in an EV toll, vertical takeoff and landing, and an EC toll, conventional takeoff and landing system, when you enter in all those operational realities, like end of life batteries, like reserve fuel, actually have very poor ranges. And so sea gliders have double the range of these vehicles. Again, 180 miles with existing battery technology because A, we fly in ground effect, we have aerodynamic efficiencies, and B, we don't have those same reserve fuel problems, we, we have the pullover on the side of the road option. We can land on the water and float like a boat and turn off our power systems. 
The other thing that sort of uh, impedes the mass adoption of a new vehicle technology is the noise, especially when we're talking about feeding metropolitan communities and building new cities. And so noise has two sources. One is the engine, and we don't have those. And the other is propeller noise or rotor noise, which scales to a very high power with thrust. And so if we can lower the thrust, we lower the noise. And that's exactly what we do. So you can see on this graph here, the noise as the vehicles get bigger and you carry more and more passengers and we look at some existing vehicles like eVTOLs and helicopters and even seaplanes, the noise goes up and up and up and up and clearly those are unviable in metropolitan environments. Sea gliders, because they're all electric and because they're highly efficient both on their foil and in ground effect, have a fraction of the noise. 12 passengers at a noise below the ambient volume in this conference. So how are we getting there? Well, we're developing a fundamentally new mode of transportation. It's not quite a boat, it's not quite a plane, it's a sea glider, and so we really need to figure out this system. We need to characterize it across all of the modes, across floating, foiling, and flying. And so we're taking a rapid prototyping approach to get there. We're starting already, and part of the announcement today was the unveiling of our first sea glider prototype, the quarter scale, uh, which we'll go over to after this, and you can get a closer look at. From there, by 2023, we're building a full scale, four times the size of that vehicle, 60-foot wingspan, 12 passengers, on which we'll put real human test operators. From there, by 2025, we'll scale up to Viceroy, our first commercial product, which we already have orders from commercial customers on both the ferry side and the airline side, looking at Miami as a potential first operation point. And from there, scale up to Monarch, a larger vehicle, truly disrupting regional jets and turboprops and fast ferries on regional routes by the end of the decade. And why are customers adopting this technology? It's the true promise of electrification. It's because it is so inexpensive. The two primary driving operating costs of an aircraft is fuel, and we have electricity, and maintenance. And we have very few moving parts. The only moving thing on this vehicle is the motors. And so when you compare on that direct operating cost perspective, the fuel plus the maintenance, and compared to existing aircraft, our Viceroy compared to small aircraft, our Monarch compared to turbojets and single aisle aircraft, we lower that cost by 70%. And when you lump it all together, including the vehicle costs and the operator costs and the docks and the airports and everything, we end up still lowering 30 to 50% on the operating costs for our customers, which is savings at the end of the day that get translated onto the ticket prices. So sea gliders are not only faster door to door and not only zero emissions, but also half the cost of an aircraft ticket. So let's make it real because we're really excited to be here in Comotion Miami and there's this huge market opportunity here. I have a lot of family in Palm Beach. We have an incredible investor set at region in Miami. We go back and forth between them. That's an hour and a half on a good day and north of two if there's traffic. We can do that flight in a half hour on a sea glider, dock to dock, city center to city center. We can expand that too, Miami to Key West, Miami to Nassau, 150 to 180 miles. Sea gliders can do that route in an hour for $80 a ticket on a Viceroy or $50 a ticket on a Monarch vehicle, all with zero emissions. That is the kind of future we offer and where some of our early customers are looking to bring this into Miami. So this is a, a real picture actually taken from Port of Miami in 2025. This is the future we're bringing to Miami here where you just go down to the dock, you don't need to put up with an airport, hop on your sea glider and off you go to the Keys, skipping that seven mile bridge and four hour drive, you get to the Key West in an hour. Now the big announcement today, in addition to the unveiling of our sea glider prototype, is for the first time we're gonna show test footage from our quarter scale prototype actually going through hydrofoil operations on the water. So if you could cue the video here. So some of this footage we've, we've already put online and sort of tease this out. Obviously you can see the vehicle out there and we want everyone to, to come out to that vehicle because we'll have a signing ceremony after this event. We've compiled an, a world-class engineering team that's built aircraft, spacecraft, hydrofoil racing yachts, F1 race cars, and we've piled them all together to build the Sea Glider. And so what we're doing when we're developing this fundamentally new mode of transportation is we need to figure out the safety, characterize the system, prove out that we can do these mode changes from floating to foiling to flying. And so that's exactly what we're doing with this prototype here. And so for the first time ever, we're going to show in person some of this uh, real test footage. And then, as I said, we actually have some customers here to do a signing ceremony. So if we could turn up the volume here.
So thank you all for, for watching. We're incredibly excited to be here. We have uh, one of our customers here that's placed firm deposits on Viceroy's, actually all the way from New Zealand to do an in-person signing ceremony on these vehicles. So uh, would love for everyone to follow us to our booth right there for this signing ceremony, and then would love to field your questions about both the prototype we have here and the eventual operations in the future. Again, I'm uh, Billy Tallheimer, co-founder and CEO of Regent. We have a lot of our incredible team here. Thank you so much.